Struggling with messy microservice deployments as your team grows? It's a mess of tools and frustration. Mia platform hides the complexity and keeps developers in control. Stick around to see how Mia platform can transform your development process. And now I'm gonna put on my developer hat. Let's get started. Here's the Mia platform and at the top of the hierarchy is a company. Inside of a company, you can create projects. As a developer, I'm going to create a new project. We can give the project a name. We're going to run a TypeScript app. Let's call it TypeScript demo app. You can give it a description or leave it empty and just click next. The platform engineers have already created a provider for me and the provider can have multiple roles. In this case, there is the Git provider, which is GitLab. There's also a CICD tool, which is also GitLab and a secrets manager, which is also GitLab for the purposes of this demo. I like this. Everything looks good. The repo is okay. And uh, the repo path, visibility internal. I'm going to use a template app default template that my platform engineers have given me. That all looks great. Next. And I have two environments, development and production. This is also set by the platform engineering teams and they have Everything created here, you can see a namespace based on the name that I gave the project for dev and another one for prod. The cluster is already determined for me. And this is a GKE cluster for production and an AKS cluster for development. So all that stuff behind the scenes, I don't have to worry about as a developer. Very easy, very simple. Click done and proceed. This is going to create a project. It's going to create an environment for me. It's going to create those namespaces that we saw in Kubernetes in both development and production, and we'll create a repo in GitLab. So we see now project information, who the owner is, team contact, and a few other settings inside of this project. First thing I want to do is start designing. So go to design, and we're going to start with a boilerplate microservice TypeScript. So you can see here some examples. Here's a TypeScript, hello world. You can see other examples. If you look at Python, for example, there's Python with Tornado, hello world. There is uh, Node.js, as you can see, another hello world microservice. We are going to go ahead and use TypeScript for this example. So we click on here and you can see that we can give this microservice a name, TypeScript, hello world, Instead of example, let's call it demo. And you can see the Git repository owner and everything else we'll leave as is. Click create. You can see creating microservices. We'll wait for a few minutes and the microservice is now created. Now you can see here that this is my microservice and notice control S to save local changes. So nothing really has happened yet. This is all within the Mia platform itself. So we're going to wait until we've created what we need, and then we're going to save, and then we'll see how we can deploy after. You can see the container ports, port 80, target port 3000. I don't have to worry about any of this, but this is all going to be deployed in Kubernetes. I could make changes here if I know what I'm doing, but otherwise I'll leave this as is. You could actually change the memory CPU requests here in limits to give to your microservice that uh, if you understand what exactly the requirements of your application are, then you can tweak these or you can come and tweak these later. That's fine. For now, as we're developing, we just want to get set up and running as soon as possible. And then we can, of course, make changes as we go along. We have our microservice. I want to add an application within the marketplace. I'm going to look for documentation. This API documentation aggregator is really neat. Because what it's going to do, if you're familiar with Swagger or OpenAPI, it will allow me to have my microservice aggregate all the endpoints through this API documentation aggregator so I can easily have my documentation in place so I can look at it. If we continue to click next, we are creating an API gateway, as you can see here, a listener name, front end, port 8080. So all that is fine. We don't need to make changes here. And Swagger Aggregator is our name for the Swagger Aggregator. You can see some of the endpoints that will get created. Click Next. 
summary. Let's go ahead and click create. This is going to create for us this application, as you can see here. And based on this application, it's going to create two microservices as well. So at this point, we can also add an endpoint. And this endpoint is going to be for our application, create new endpoint. And this endpoint is just going to be called readings. And we're going to select the type of this endpoint is a microservice. There are multiple options, but we are going to select microservice because we're going to select our TypeScript Hello World demo as our microservice. This will show up in the documentation in just a few minutes. So we see now all our endpoints are here. Our microservices are here. We're happy to go. We can go ahead and click this to save our configuration. So we see here. A few things I don't have to worry about too much, but endpoints, there was nothing before. And now the current change, we have this. You can see listeners, applications, workload, and so on. Let's save our configuration. You can save a message or leave it as is. Let's say endpoints plus microservices. We can control enter or hit save. And that's it. Our configuration is now saved. Now let's go ahead and deploy this microservice. We can go ahead and click deploy. And we can choose whether to deploy to development or production. So let's go ahead and deploy to development for now. We need to specify what revision or version to deploy. In this case, main is our branch we're deploying. And we can go ahead and smart deploy. And as you can see, deploying main on development. If I'm curious, I can click on view pipeline and you can view the pipeline within GitLab. And if you click through here, you'll see the pipeline is getting ready to go. But again, I didn't have to do any of this. This was all done for me behind the scenes. We see that this is the job has succeeded. Deploy successful and I can monitor the runtime status. In this case, I see my pods. There's all Kubernetes behind the scenes. I can see a bunch of pods got created. We can put the refresh rate for every five seconds to get this to refresh or manually click refresh here. My application is now up and running. And in fact, I can click here and view some of the logs, how to describe the pod events. And what Mia is doing very well is it's abstracting and hiding behind the scenes all the Kubernetes constructs that we otherwise would have to learn as developers. And if I go and look at my logs, I can directly see the logs of my pod. You can see host name, TypeScript, the world pod, server listening at all IPs, port 3000. So it's up and running. I can describe this, expand all. This is like running kubectl describe for my pod. We can go ahead and take a look at different things like my environment variables running in the pod. And then we can look at the events. The Kubernetes events, as you can see, we're pulling the image, image pulled, and we've scheduled. Everything looks great. All right. And that's all I need as a developer. I don't need to mess around with Kubernetes internals. Let's go back and look at all our pods. They're all up and running. Excellent. We can go ahead now, go to overview, and you see that production, we have no pods, nothing running in production. In development, we have three out of three pods running. They're healthy. We can see the CPU, the RAM. We can deploy from here, or we can view the runtime from here, or go to documentation. That's really what I want to show you. Now we go to documentation, and you can see that we have the TypeScript demo app, and here is our endpoint greetings, hello. And you can see the default value is world. We can go ahead and try that out, click execute, and you get the message, hello world. So amazing, our application is up and running, our microservice is up and running. It has documentation already there. In under 10 minutes, we're able to get everything set for our application. Now it's time to make changes because of course, as developers, we want to go and make changes to the application as we're developing. So you can go back to design and if you click on view repository, it will actually take you to the repo in GitLab, TypeScript, hello world demo. We can see everything in here and here's our source code, for example, but I'm not going to mess around inside of GitLab. I'm actually going to clone this into my visual studio code. Clicking Visual Studio Code SSH, this will allow me to open my Visual Studio Code. And what will happen is it will ask me, where do you want to clone this to? So I'll give it a 
folder in here. I'll say select this repo and select this as the destination. Mm -hmm. And we're going to open in Visual Studio Code. And here we go. We now have our cloned repo on Visual Studio Code. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a real quick change that I'll make. So inside of the source code index.ts for TypeScript, the endpoint has a default of world. So if I change this to everyone, okay, I can make that change so that whenever we're running this endpoint, by default, it will say, hello, everyone. And then I need to make the same change in the tests. Otherwise, the, our pipeline will fail because the test fails because we're testing specifically on hello world. So we'll change this to hello, everyone. Now that is done. I can simply go ahead and commit this change to everyone. Commit. And we'll just easily push this. Obviously in production, you're going to have a pull request and a peer review, but just for simplicity for our demo, we directly pushed to our remote repo. And of course, if you refresh this, you'll see that the pipeline is still running. So we just got a little bit patient here. If we give this a minute or so, we'll see that the pipeline will succeed. All right, fantastic. Our pipeline is complete. Now, if you go back and decide to deploy this, we'll deploy it to development. Go to main and go ahead and deploy. All right, you can see monitor runtime status. Something is changing. Let's put a refresh rate for five seconds. The Swagger aggregator and TypeScript, hello world demo, these pods are going to be rescheduled and we will have the old pods get removed. Didn't have to do anything as a developer. I'm just working on my code. I'm pushing to development and I'm getting my application updated. And very quickly, we're going to also push this to production. It's done. Let's go back to our overview and under development, let's click on our documentation to see the change. And here we go. Default value is now everyone. So if you try it out once again, we click execute, it will say, hello, everyone. We made the change. We deployed it to development. Let's now see how we can deploy it to production. All we need to do is go to production here, hit deploy, or if you're in the deploy page, you can go to production and deploy that way. Okay. Main branch. Let's go ahead and deploy. Now I can monitor the runtime status once again. Notice now we're in production. So this is on the GCP cluster, not on the AKS cluster. So let's go ahead and refresh every five seconds. We're deploying now. And if we're interested in seeing some of the events, we can see these live. There we go. It's already scheduled. Logs are good. All right. This all works very well. We can now go and take a look at our documentation once again, but this time for production. You can see production is up and running. Go to documentation. And here we go. And we see, hello, everyone is working great. And that is it. Now we've seen how as a developer, it's super easy for me to create a project based on a template that was created for me by the platform engineering team. I can start to develop very easily, make changes, deploy to development, deploy to production, see my changes, of course, and all is done seamlessly. So it's not just the deployment of a new project, but it's the day two work, which is very important as I'm developing on that project moving forward. And now let me change hats and put on my platform engineering hat to show you how everything is done behind the scenes. Here we go. I have deleted everything and starting from scratch. Here's my SAM company. There are no projects, no project blueprints, nothing at all. Well, first thing we're going to do is attach two clusters, two Kubernetes clusters. And the first one is going to be our production cluster, which is going to be GKE. There are a few things we need to do here. First is give it a cluster ID. We're going to call this one GCP prod. And then we need the cluster URL. You would get that from your GKE cluster. Here's my cluster URL. And geographics or description, you can leave that blank or fill it out if you wish. 
But then we need to attach our service account token. So you'd need to create a service account token in your cluster and then paste that in here. And next, you also want to add your certificate authority. So add that here so you can grab the certificate authority and paste it in here. And that's it. That should add our first cluster for us. Cluster connected looks great. And you can see here, it's a GCP cluster, cluster URL, and everything looks great. Of course, we want to go back and create our second cluster, which will be our AKS cluster for development. So select AKS. Once again, let's give it a name, AKS non-prod in this case, and the cluster URL. And of course, the service account token. Add our certificate authority and add our cluster. There we go, we have our second cluster. And now if you go to clusters here, you'll see we have both our clusters, GCP prod and AKS non prod. Great. Next, we wanna add providers. And if you recall providers, we have different kinds of providers and we can have a Git provider, a CICD tool provider and a secret manager provider. Of course, you can add any one of the ones you see here, but my favorite is GitLab, so it gives us all of these um, at once. So you can see we've selected Secret Manager, CICD Tool, and Git Provider. And we click Next. Provider Name, so we can give this one a name. We'll call it uh, something like My GitLab Provider or something. And the API Base URL. So let's tie mine in here and then the base URL. You can give it a description or leave it empty. That's fine. And then finally put in a token to connect to your GitLab account. Click next and we can go ahead and add provider there. Provider connected successfully. You can go to it under providers. We can see it has the capabilities, as I mentioned, Git provider, secret manager, and CICD tool. Then we just need to go back here and make sure that we select Git provider as my GitLab provider, set that as default and do the same for secret manager, my GitLab provider set as default. And then finally the CICD tool is also my GitLab provider and set that as default. Next, we want to add environments so we can go to our project blueprint here and go to environments and add a new runtime environment. This one we'll call development and we'll give it an ID, call it dev and environment variables prefix. We'll call this one dev as well. Cluster ID, we're gonna select our AKS cluster in this case for non-prod or for dev. Then for cube URL, we're just gonna use this variable here. For cube token, use this variable here. Use cube no prod CA PM. These are our cluster interpolation variables. Of course you can Open the documentation and learn a little bit more about it. This looks good. Go ahead and create environment. Environment is added. Let's go to the environment. We see our first environment development is good to go. And we can go ahead and deploy or create our next environment, which is the production environment. We'll call it production. Enable production environment. Radio button here. And then we'll call this, the ID will be prod. The prefix is prod. We'll select our GKE cluster, GCP prod. And for the variables down here, cube URL and our cube token. And finally, our CA PEM variable. There we go. And go ahead and create the environment. I understand the issue. Go to environment. And now we have our two environments that we saw in the beginning of the video all ready to go for our developers to select as they build their projects. And now it's time to create a project template where we can create projects out of this template. So under project blueprint and project templates, click on add template and let's give it a name. It's called app default, for example. And then we're going to fill out a few things here. The archive URL, which is a GitLab URL which is a tarball basically for a repo that I'll show you in just a minute. And then we leave the deployment strategy as push mode for pipeline based deployment and leave also pipeline runner as MLP here for MIA platform launchpad. 
and we'll use customize as our project structure. So this is enough for us to create our template. We can go ahead and go to template and we see it here, the archive URL. So if you're curious, you can take a look at how, what this URL actually is. So if you take this and let's copy, open a new tab and look at that. It's a JSON that is basically going to be sent to the GitLab API, but you can see the name here of the repo, Mia Platform Enhanced Workflow Template Demo. And here it is. So you can see that it is templatized. So you can see it has a configuration folder and environments with a templatized env ID, overlays env ID, a pipeline file for GitLab, README, MLP, and even the README also is also templatized for our projects. So what this looks like, if you click in here, you can see a customization.yaml and uh, you can see the environments as well, customization here, also overlays. And here's our pipeline, also templatized. So once you create a project after that, you'll see here's a quick example of a project that I have. You can see that the template has been replaced with the project name, for example, here. And of course, the pipeline has been replaced and everything is ready to go. And this is how you templatize a project and provide it for your developers. So then the developers can choose that template for their project. And then they set up the project as we saw in the beginning of this video when I was wearing the developer hat. And then finally, when they create their microservice like this TypeScript, hello demo, here's the GitLab repo. So there are two repos really. There's the repo where they're developing, they're actually writing their source code and everything else, their tests. And there's also the repo where things are getting configured. So you can see the environments, for example, dev, and you can see the manifests for Kubernetes. All that is also in the configuration repo where we had the template for. And that is really it. I showed you how things work behind the scenes as a platform engineer. And that's it. We've seen how Mia platform simplifies microservice deployments from setting up projects and environments to actual development and deployment all while abstracting the complexities of Kubernetes. Whether you're a developer or part of the platform engineering team, Mia Platform makes the whole process seamless and efficient. Thanks for watching.